Baines. Mr. Henshaw. You need gas? Uh, y- yes. It's not empty. I... Uh... You here for a visit? Uh, yes. Who's that? My son, Lonnie. Oh, I didn't recognize him. I, I suppose he was just a boy when I left. Didn't need but a few gallons. Yes, I, uh, I, I guess so. Uh, hello. Let's see, um, there we go. Changes inside. Oh, well, I'll, uh, I'll get it some other time. I'm, I'm in a hurry. Thank you. Uh, thank you. You gonna stop me, little man? You show some respect. you tell us what flight you were on? We could have driven over to Reno to pick you up. It just seemed easier to rent a car. You must be exhausted, that long drive after a plane trip. I didn't plan things very well. Well, the important thing is you're here. I've just been getting some flowers for your room. Oh, Rose. The people who make up those awful stepmother jokes never met my stepmother. Come here. I want you to meet my son. Oh, finally must have stepped out for a few minutes. He just got back from church. Justin! Oh, well, he'll be back soon. Would you like some coffee? Oh, I'd love it so good. Let's have it outside. It's always so gloomy in here without the guests. Oh, Eddie's been trying to reach you. He called a couple of times. Thanks. Um, Want to freshen up? Yes. Now, don't tell me. There used to be a powder room right there. Still is. Solid silver faucet. <laughs> Where's Daddy? Oh, he's gone. He's in Mexico poking around those ruins of his. Already? He usually waits until May. Not your father. He goes when the spirit moves him. When did he leave? Oh, several weeks ago. We weren't expecting you. No, no, of course not. When I got your telegram, I tried to call, but you were already gone. Once I decided I was coming, I just wanted to get here. Liza something wrong? Something's very wrong. Oh, my Jean. How long is she staying? You've been listening. Well? I really didn't ask. You've got no call. 
cause to worry I have. Would you please put these in Mrs. Cracker's room and bring some coffee out to us? I didn't mean to be mysterious before. I've come out here to get a divorce. Oh, Liza, I'm sorry. Are you surprised? Well, I guessed you were having problems. That bad? Hopeless, Rose. Are you sure? Yes. I'll drive over to Carson City tomorrow and establish residence. You think you can stand to have me around for six weeks? Oh, darling, this is your home. If your father had known, I'm sure he... Oh, here's the coffee. May Jean. Hello, Liza. Well, how long have you been working here? A year, maybe. Since the mine played out. How's Mel? It's all right. And the baby? She must be a big girl by now. Betsy's nine. Oh, don't go. Stay a minute. I have work to do. We used to be friends. We went to school together. Well, May Jean Warren's not a very gracious person, I'm afraid. Justin? Oh, yes. You must come meet him. Oh, don't interrupt him. Nonsense. He'd never forgive me. He plays well. Yes, he's taken over as organist for the church. And he's done a wonderful job with restorations here at the lodge. You're proud of him. Justin has been everything a mother could want. Well, at last. <laughs> I was beginning to think you were a figment of Rose's imagination. I've heard a great deal about you, too. Liza, my fabulous stepsister. Is that what we are, stepbrother and sister? Well, aren't we? I suppose so, but it sounds so grim. Wicked mothers and no porridge? Mm, something like that. Well, we'll just be friends then. That'll leave a lot more latitude. I felt the same about May Jean as I did about Mr. Henshaw. It was as if I were a stranger, as if I had no business being here at all. Here, let me take that for you. How long have you been gone? About five years. Why? Well, you see, Liza, your family's lived here for, uh, well, over a century. And they made a lot of money here. <laughs> And so when your father had to close down the mine, he and Rose had this lodge to fall back on. It wasn't so easy for the people who were working for him. The haves and have-nots. Yeah, exactly. Most of the miners went away. But the ones who stayed really had a bad time. <laughs> and now you come from New York, and you're young and beautiful and successful. And it looks as if the Staines family had grabbed up all the luck that this town had coming to it. If you uh, want me to talk to Henshaw about his boy, I'll be glad to. Oh, no. No, don't do that. He, he didn't really bother me or anything. <laughs> maybe I was just imagining things. Yeah, maybe so. Well, ma'am, is there uh... a... <clears throat> Anything more I can do for you? No. Do I have time for a nap before lunch? All the time you want. Thank you for everything. I'm glad you're here, Liza. Uh, May Jean, would you see to it that Mrs. Crocker gets some towels, please? Sure. Stray dog. Somebody probably left him in the woods. He's been hanging around for weeks. It happens every season. Dogs run off, the hunters just leave them. You probably don't remember.
She's a married woman, Justin. What are you saying? I know how appealing you can be. And? I mean, it's not as if she and I were really brother and sister, is it? Who is that? My son, Lonnie. Oh, he's not here. He's in Mexico, poking around those ruins of his. Wicked mothers and no porridge? Stray dog. Somebody probably left him in the woods. few hours ago. Uh, Eddie, she doesn't want to talk to you. Uh, I don't know. Uh, listen, why don't you write her a letter? I'll talk to her. There's no sense in you being the victim. Hello? Liza? Yes, I'm here. What does she mean you don't want to talk to me? I don't. <laughs> what is this? I get back from Boston and all I find is a three-word note. I'm going home. This is home. I'm getting a divorce. Eddie? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I just don't believe you. Look, uh, honey, I, I can't handle this on the phone. There's nothing to handle. I've made up my mind. I'm coming out tonight. No, no, I can't. I've got that Barbados thing coming up on Tuesday. I can't afford to drop it. Eddie. Huh? Would you just relax just a second, please? What? <laughs> Nothing, nothing, darling. I'm right in the middle of the sitting. Why don't you meet me in Barbados? We can straighten everything out there. Don't you understand? There's nothing to handle or straighten out or even talk about. Sweetie, I've got another booking in Please, will you just relax? Why don't you get ready? I'll be with you in just a second, huh? Liza. Liza? You all finished? Yeah. Jean said you were back. Were you trying to shoot that dog? Yeah. Why? Chicken teeth. Well, he looks like he's starving. Chicken teeth. Like that. It's okay for me to be here. My mom works at this hotel. 
Ah. Then I'll bet you're Betsy Ann Warren. That's right. <laughs> I'm Liza Crocker. I used to live in this hotel. I know. I came out to see you. Oh? Well, I like company. Come on over and sit by me. I didn't come to talk to you. Just to look at you. Oh. Well, I've never seen a clothes horse before. Is that what I am? A clothes horse? Mom told my dad you are. What's a clothes horse? Someone who buys lots of dresses. Is that what you are? <laughs> no. No, but I draw pictures of dresses for magazines. You know, I don't think my mom wants you here. I think you're right, Betsy. Do you know why? It's probably about Melanie. Who's Melanie? My cousin. I found her. There. What do you mean you found her? Drowned. She was drowned in that lake. She was a year older than me, but not as smart. I'm awful smart. Yes, you are. She was prettier, though. She had blonde hair and pretty eyes. I'm plain. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Melanie used to tell me so. I'm plain, but I'm smart. You found her in the lake? Yeah, she was right there. Sharon. Oh, sure, honey. You didn't have to beat her. She disobeyed me. I told her not to talk to that woman. She's just a baby. Just a baby. She ain't no baby. You're nine years old. Here you go. You shut up or you're gonna get some of the same. Try it. Come on, Sharon. Let's shake it around. Cool it, good man. I don't want your sister to think I'm robbing the cradle. Hey, I don't give a... Hush your mouth. I hear Liza Staines back in town. Her name's Crocker now. I haven't seen her since high school. Is she there now at the lodge? Went for a walk. I'd like to see her. Stay away from the lodge, Sally. Don't tell me what to do. Stay away from the lodge. I just want to see Liza. What you do is you get me and him and Dad in trouble is what you're going to do. Now stay away from the All lodge. right, Lonnie, leave her alone. Hey, I don't care if she is my sister. I'll break her back. You know, of course, you're something of a hero to my father and Rose. Well, there's nothing very heroic about... Shaking a dope habit. Some people might think there is. Well, my addiction was never really psychological. It started when they operated on my leg. I would help the pain. <laughs> that sort of thing happens in a war. Rose is an extraordinary woman. Do you know that all the time I was in the hospital, she wouldn't tell your father about me? Not until I had shaken the habit. They must have been married for over a year before he even knew he had a stepson. Twice a month, she'd come over to San Francisco and visit me at the hospital. Your father and I were the only family she had. Yet she kept us apart until she could be proud of me. But <laughs> once I'd won my struggle with Satan, she was ready to tell the whole world. There's an old-fashioned rightness to that. 
I find it irresistible. Justin, was one of the children drowned? Why? Who told you that? Betsy Warren. She said a little girl named Melanie was found in the lake. Uh, I'd better answer that. Excuse me. Is it true? Betsy likes to tell stories. Why would she tell a story like that? Hello? To get your attention, I suppose. <laughs> no wonder her father was so angry. Well, would you put them through anyway, please? Yes, I'll pay the charges. Buenas noches. Uh, ¿Cuándo supone usted que el señor Stein va a regresar? Mexico. Yeah. Could you get me something to write with? Stains. Sí. Uh, ¿Pudiera indicarme otro modo de ponerme en contacto con él? Sí, estaría muy agradecido. Sí, un momento. Sí. Gracias. Uh, en caso que vuelva, dile que llame su familia en Nevada. Sí. Gracias. Your father's away on a field trip. Uh, they don't expect him back for several days. But we could get a message to him through the state police. I'd like to try that. Do you mind? Well, no. He left his Bible. And his gun. Oh. We used to make jokes about it. He always took them with him everywhere. making a corsage for Melanie. Betsy, what happened to your face? Nothing. Did you fall? Did, did someone hit you? No, I'm not supposed to talk to you. Why, Betsy? Is Melanie Bixton the little girl who drowned? How did she drown, Betsy? Do you know? I gotta go. Justin! It's getting cold, isn't it? A child was drowned here, wasn't she? The coroner said that Melanie was dead when she was put in the water. Who? We don't know. Vagrants come through here, prospectors. Who were the Bixtons? Sally Hanshaw, Bud's daughter. Oh, of course. I went to school with her. She married a fellow from Sacramento. Don Bixton. He was killed in the Mekong Delta. Justin, why did Rose want me to think that Betsy was lying? I don't know. Sometimes my mother is too refined. I suppose she felt you were depressed enough about the divorce. Hello, Mr. Apperson.
supervise her. What do you have in the way of cleansing cream? Oh, is this the only brand you have? Yes, 90 cents. And I need some nail polish remover, too. All out. Oh, all right. Hello, Sally. Liza. How are you? I'm fine. I heard about... about you. I, I'm so sorry. I'd like to come see you. Well, I'm, uh... I'm kind of busy these days. All right. I'll be here for a while. I'd like to buy some scraps of meat. What kind of scraps? Anything. I want to feed that dog. I don't have any scraps. Then you sell me anything. I'll let her feed him if she wants to. He's starving. All right, I'll find you something. You just stay there. It's all right. You're all right. You're all right. Okay? Okay? Want another one? for you. You want some? Oh, boy, that's good. That's good. Yeah, that's good. That's easy.
settlers' graves hundreds of years old in these woods. Settlers, miners, you know that, Miss Stane. It looked new. Where'd you find this grave? Oh, that, that path that runs near the mine? It must have been about, oh, uh, 50 feet off of that, near a burned-out tree. How'd you come across it? The dog. The stray dog led me to it. That dog's a chicken. Dog probably buried a chicken. In a grave that size? Well, I'll call up some of the men. We'll find the spot and dig it up. Thank you. Oh, uh, wait a minute, Miss Staines. You can save me a trip. This came for your father. Of Do course. you mind? Of course not. I'll call you when we know something. Thanks again, Mr. Henshaw. Mm. Goodbye. Ignition must be wet. I'll put it right for you. Will it take long? Well, maybe an hour. I'll drive you home, and I'll bring the car over when it's fixed. Oh, thanks, but you don't have to drive me home. The rain's let up. I'll walk. I'll pick the car up tomorrow. Do it yourself. There's a back path. I know. I took it to school for 12 years. Thanks, Mr. Henshaw. Can't you answer it? Yeah. No. She was here. She had car trouble. She left. No, it'll take her longer than that. She's walking. Yeah. Where are you going? I thought maybe I'd make sure she got home safe. She'll, uh, be here soon. I think I'd better hold up dinner another half hour. Here. Do you feel up to talking to him? Did he find anything? I don't know. I'll be right there. Come in, Mr. Henshaw. You found your grave. Had a deer in it. <laughs> That's a relief, isn't it? Who would want to bury a deer? Well, it's out of season, Miss Staines. Hunter probably lost his nerve. Decided to bury his kill. 
Well, that's an awful lot of trouble to go to just to avoid a hunting violation. Liza, I told Mr. Henshaw about what happened tonight, and he says that dog is crazy and has knocked people down before. Oh, I don't think it was the dog. I think it was a person. Oh, Liza, dear, you can't be sure. This kind of a night, the storm, the grave, all of that could play tricks on you. Thank you, Mr. Henshaw. Glad to help. Good night, Mr. Staines. Good night. Thank you. Well, maybe it was all my imagination. Liza. And maybe that's my imagination, too. Well, is she happy now? Good night, gentlemen. Daddy may want this forwarded. It's from a camera supply house in New York. Hmm. It's a special kind of light attachment. He must have wanted it for photographing the inside of the ruins. I, I don't understand it. I, I don't understand any of this. It cost a fortune. He ordered it specially months ago. Well, why didn't he wait for it to come? And why hasn't he answered my call? What are you suggesting? I don't know what I'm suggesting. I... You've had a bad experience tonight, that's all. It's, it's, it's all connected somehow. That dog and, and the way this town's been treating me. And my father. Liza, if we thought that there were really anything to worry you about... You know what you... your father is like when he's working. I'm going to Mexico. I'll just feel better if I see him. You don't know your way around down there. Well, there must be a consulate or something. If he's there, they'll help me. We can't just let you go down there and no, wander. No, Rose, it's all right. If it's going to make you feel better. Will you be all right to travel tomorrow? Oh, sure. All right, I'll make your reservation. You think I'm being hysterical, don't you? said Melanie was dead when she was put in the water. Drowned. She was drowned in that lake.
You'll have about an hour's layover in Mexico City, and then at 310 you'll get to Catalan. I have a car and driver there to meet you. Well, good morning. Why did you come here, Eddie? My plane was hijacked to Reno. What about the Barbados job? I told him to get somebody else. That's a lot of money. Well, it's relative values. I think my wife is trying to leave me. Eddie, your coming here isn't going to change anything. Uh, excuse me, Justin. This is my husband, Eddie Crocker. I'm sorry, Eddie. I don't want to talk to you. Besides, I'm leaving for Mexico. Well, I'll fly with you. No. Oh, come on, honey. This is no way to end a marriage. You take the stereo and I'll take the TV. End it any way you like, but end it. This is for you, Liza. It must have come during the night. Thank you. It's from my father. Is everything okay? Yeah, yes, yes. Well, now I don't know what to do. You can fly to New York with me. Uh, will you take my suitcase back up to my room, please, Justin? Sure. I'll have May Jean fix you some breakfast. I mean, I could use a cup of coffee, too, and maybe some English muffin. Or... Welcome to Nevada, Eddie. I'm sorry, Eddie. I, I shouldn't have greeted you like I did. It's no excuse, but I've, I've been through quite a lot the past couple of days. Yeah, me too. Oh, it's not, it's not uh, just you and me. It's... Uh, well, not being able to contact my father. And this town, it, it's not at all like I remembered it. It's uh, so hostile and unfriendly. <laughs> Sounds like New York. Anyway, I'm, I'm sorry I was rude to you. You know, I must have read your note 50 times before I realized that you just didn't go out for a pound of butter. I love you, Liz. I always will. is here. When? I don't know. Sometime during the night. So she's staying. Good. They'll get back together and get out of here. I don't think so. What do you mean? I mean that by the way she was talking just now, it sounded as if she was determined to go through with a divorce. Should make you happy. What does that mean? Dreams of glorious lovemaking, Justin. Don't be ridiculous, Ross. She's young. She's beautiful. You must have visions of her young body pressed against yours. You're not used to that, are you? But you're a damn fool if you think you and she can make it. Really, Rose, you're wrong. Am I? Yes. For a woman with a certain degree of intelligence and sophistication, you seem to have no more control over your imagination than a schoolgirl. Now, what do I have to do to prove to you that you're wrong? Are you sure you won't just have... No, thanks. Goodbye, Liz. Goodbye.
piety. Eddie? I'll ride over with you to the village. I have to pick up my car at Henshaw's. Is it all right? Of course. I'm worried, Justin. It's going to be all right? She's going to find out. No, she won't. A little child was murdered here, Eddie, about three weeks ago. And put in the lake, just there. That's terrible. Who did it? No one knows. She was the daughter of a girl I knew in high school. We used to be quite close. Hello. Oh, no, Mrs. Crocker isn't here at the moment. May I ask who's called? people say at times like these. Uh, this is a 40-mile limit. You can speed up if you want to. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. I didn't know I was dawdling. I can't imagine why I'm not able to keep my mind on the road sides. Don't, Eddie. That I had something profound rattling around inside of my head or that I was even disturbed about something. at my house, the old Mallory place. Don't let anybody see you. No excuse, but I've been through a lot the past couple of days. Well, not only you and me, well, not being able to contact my father in this town is not at all like I remembered it. It's, it's so hostile and unfriendly. And yesterday in the woods, I found a grave.
get away from my father. There isn't much time. I follow the car to run a few errands. since it happened. My dad and Lonnie, they don't... they don't like me to come. Goodness. Everything's dirty. I really must get over and clean one day. Liza, will you lend me a thousand dollars? I'll pay you back. What's the trouble, Sally? I've got to get away from here. What for, a trip? No, Liza, for good. Where would you go? Oh, Denver, I think. It I... doesn't matter. Alone? I'll pay you something every month. I've just got to get away from here. Sally, do you really think you should be alone right now? I feel like I'm buried alive here. I know. You but... don't know. Nobody knows. I if a thousand dollars is too much, give me five hundred. It isn't the money. Well, then what is it? Why did we have to meet here like this? Like what? Secretly. Well, my, my father and, and Lonnie, they... How do they feel about your going away? Oh, you mustn't tell them. Why not? Please, Liza, don't ask me so many questions. Just help me. It's not just what happened to Melanie, is it? No. No, it isn't. I don't want to tell you this. They're right. There's... There's no reason you should know. Except you're the only one who can help me. You better read something. I... I keep it so I won't forget how things started. When I forget, then it seems like it was all my fault. Man in green Lincoln coming from Reno next Saturday. He killed a little girl. Who sent this? I don't know. It came in the mail. It was a few days after they found Melanie. At first, I thought it was some kind of a prank. <laughs> but I, I couldn't bring myself to throw the letter away. about it was, a big green car did come through here not long before. I remembered I'd been over at the lodge one day, visiting May Jean when I saw it. The man who owned it, Mr. Spangler, May Jean said he was a salesman. Came through about once a month. So I knew there was a man and a green Lincoln car. And finally I decided to show the letter to my father. The thing you have to understand about my father. He loved Melanie. About the only softness I ever saw in my father was the way he loved Melanie. What did he do? Sally? He called a meeting. Melanie's death had done something to the town made people feel different about each other. I guess they couldn't help thinking every time they saw a neighbor. Maybe it was him. Maybe he did it. When my father read them the letter, that changed things for them. Lonnie was there. I made him tell me what happened. He said when people read the letter, they felt, well, kind of good. They'd suspected one of their own had killed Melanie. Now they knew it was an outsider. I suppose it was a, a kind of blessing to them. And nobody even wondered who sent the message? If they did, I... 
Well, it was already Friday night. There wasn't much time for questions. Lonnie says some wanted to call the sheriff in Dodge Junction, but they got voted down. Why? People wanted to take the man themselves. They needed to. First thing next morning, they all met out in the Reno Road. They made a barricade out of Mel Warren's car. I guess they must have been there a couple of hours when this Spangler finally came along. father told Spangler he was under arrest for the murder of Melanie Bixton. He said he never even heard of her. And they were sure he was lying. He tried to get away, but they grabbed him. They, they pulled him out. Then Mel Warren took his car over to the service station and that, that dog kept on barking at him. Once they got Spangler back to my father's office. I suppose they asked him some questions. Who he was, where he came from, what he was doing here. They were going to take him over to Dodge Junction to the jail, but when they got him outside, he broke free. Mel Warren had taken his car keys, but nobody knew that. I suppose my father pictured Spangler getting away. He shot him. Maybe my father's shot killed Spangler, maybe not. Nobody will ever know that for sure. What do you mean? I guess it was Mel Warren who spoke up first. Mel said, are we going to back up Bud Henshaw on this or aren't we? Mel shot Spangler. Then he made sure the others, they did the same. Lonnie was the only one that didn't take a shot at him. Then they found out he was innocent. They found his passport in his car. It had dates in it, trips he'd taken. When Melanie was killed, Spangler was in Italy. That was the grave I found. I still hear that dog. They tracked him down the other night, and they killed him. But I still hear him howling. Do you think I always will? She went out. She said she was going for a long drive. How come you're back, Eddie? Well, I decided to give the kid another chance. <sighs> Good. I'm glad you're on my side. Can you put me up? Oh, of course. I'll, I'll have May Jean make up 215. Um, show Eddie where it is, will you, Justin? what really happened here to Melanie Bixton and that man, Spangler. Liza, knowledge like that is a burden. Who told you? 
Someone who was terrified to confide in me. Probably Sally Bixton. Justin, do they really think they can keep that thing a secret forever? I'm sure they hope so. But that's wrong. Well, what would have been right? You can't prosecute a whole town, Liza. Those men were full of booze and, and, and upset about the child. They're going to have to live with that for the rest of their lives. Well, you can't just sweep it under a rug. There are too many questions. Well, who would send that kind of a letter? Sally really told you a lot, didn't she? Well, who would send a letter like that? Somebody who had it in for Spangler. Exactly. Somebody in this town. And why hasn't somebody come looking for him? I don't know. Well, who was Spangler? And, and why did he run? A man with nothing to hide doesn't try to escape. Why didn't he just show them his passport? Your guess is as good as mine. As far as I know, he was a salesman. Liza, this is an ugly business. And sometimes it's better to let an ugly business die. He's asleep, I think, in Sally Bixton. And? She knows about Spangler. Is that all? Isn't that enough? expression off your face, soldier. Betty, this isn't funny. Come in, come in. Rose seems very anxious for us to get together again. Now, I prefer to think it's because she likes me, but I have a suspicion she just wants to get you out of here. Hmm. Yes. She and some others. What do you mean? I'll be back at dinner time. I'll see you. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hey, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Where are you going? Carson City, it's just a little air. I'll go with you. I'll go. No, 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 you stay here and rest. I'll be back about, oh, six o'clock. I get the feeling you don't want me. Look, let's just say I can do this errand quicker without you, okay? Thank you again, Mr. Carter. Could it possibly make if Sally Bixon leaves town? But how much does Liza know? Rose, she knows how Spangler died. I know she knows that. about the letter. What does she suspect? Will you stop worrying? Her husband would take her back to New York. But she won't find out. Nobody will. I hope you're right, Justin. You can't afford to be wrong. Who is it? 
I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What happened? Nothing. Oh, Sally. Sally. It's all right. Oh. It's all right. <laughs> I'll never forget this, Liza. As soon as I get a job, I'll, I'll start sending you something. When are you leaving? Tomorrow. My dad and Lonnie are going to Reno. And I'll leave while they're gone. Are you sure that's the best way? Oh, Liza, they're so scared. They'd never let me go. Stay for a while. Just, just stay till I finish packing. Get some rest. I'll be back about six. It's so hard to know what to take. I might be better off not taking anything, just starting fresh. But if I didn't have something with me, just to remember Dan and Melanie by, I'd feel like all these years never happened. I'm not going to live in the past, though. I, I'm really not. I'm going to find a new job and get some new friends. I think I'll join a church right off. I think that'll help. Where did Melanie get these? Oh, I don't know. She was always one for collecting things. She'd say she found that in her secret place. When they found her, she had this one tucked inside her sweater. It's a part of an old geisha doll. How did it get broken? Oh, I suppose, uh... She tried to fight with whoever it was. Sally, I know where Melanie found these dolls. They used to be mine.
still got time to run out to Dodge Junction, get some barbecue. <laughs> Not tonight, Junior. How come they never give me a tumble? Well, I don't think I could ever get rid of the picture of you coming in here asking for penny candy in your rompers. <laughs> you bug me, Sharon. <laughs> well, I guess I'll have to just shake the tree a little bit. Woohoo! <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Hello there. Oh, hi. I'm Liza Crocker's husband. Uh, wouldn't mind shutting that door, would you? Oh, sorry. Have you seen her by any chance? Uh -uh. She went by here about a half hour ago. Uh, what direction? That way. She went to the lodge, I figure. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. My suitcase. Uh, I left something in it. Your suitcase? Down here? What have you got there? You afraid of me? So why didn't you just give me that thing? Just give it to me and then go away and forget you ever saw it. Why did you do it? Liza, why don't you just give it to me? Didn't you hear me? I said you could go away. Justin! All right. I'll go away. I, I, won't, I won't come back.
she knows. Does she? Does she know we killed her father? No. That was an accident. He caught us there on that bed, together. And he, and he grabbed me and he put me up against that post and he tried to kill me. And I, I hit him or, or kicked him or something. And suddenly he was just lying there with his head against the furnace and, and he was dead. We didn't mean to hurt the child. Justin only wanted to make her stop, to make her be quiet. She saw everything. I couldn't let her go. Now, Rose, give me the gun. No, Justin, it's too late. I knew the minute she arrived here, it was only a matter of time. My husband is dead, and a child is dead, and you want to kill again. I can't let you do that, Justin. Rosie, please. Rosie. Please. Your father and I were married. I was visiting a friend in San Francisco. She does volunteer work for the military hospitals there. She asked me to come with her. There were many appealing young men there. But Justin was so special. He I suppose it was inevitable that we would fall to talking. We'd both been lonely for such a long time. The next day I went back. I kept telling myself I was imagining things. I was crazy. But he really did seem to need me. Many times after that. How could you bring him here? I had to. He had no place to go. And we loved each other. Mrs. Staines. 
Who sent the note about Spangler? Spangler was an evil man. He knew Justin before. He knew him when he was an addict. He tried to get him back on dope. He tried to get him to sell dope. I had to get Justin free of him. He got what he deserved. Who was Spangler? I can tell you the rest of the story. Mrs. Staines, you have to come with us now. Eliza, we'll need to have you come in and make a statement.